Nestled in the shadow of South Africa's Drakensberg Mountains are two schools hoping to produce the next generation of Springboks. Obviously, Hilton my class is the big one. Uh, we play them twice a year, and it's amazing. It's often called our brother school, um, and a lot of the boys are very tight, um, but they often say you sometimes have the best fights with your brother. You are sitting 20 k's outside of Peter Moesburg in the Midlands of, of KZN, and Hilton College was established 140 odd years ago, and it's a purely boarding school. We have nearly 500 pupils, all of them full-time boarders, and sadly, very high fee paying. We're at Michaelhaus. We station midway between the Drakensberg and Durban on the east coast of, of KwaZulu-Natal province. Michaelhaus is, was founded in 1896. We, we currently have 565 boys, I believe. We have boys from all around South Africa, so quite a melting pot of, of cultures and ideas and worldviews. Uh, unique in that it's a full boarding school uh, and a boys only high school. Yeah, we've got tw uh, normally plus minus 20 rugby teams. Uh, we have four in the under-14s, four in the under-15s, four in the under-16s, and then tend to have about eight or nine teams in the open age group. Um, Hilton have got a couple of fairly famous old boys who've all worn the national jersey. And the ones who spring to mind are people like Gary Teichman, who went into captain the Springboks. N.T. Martins, who obviously played scrum off for the Springboks, and Wayne Fivey, who played flank for the Springboks. Bobby Skinstad, also captain of the Springboks. They are all sort of in the, in the last generation. So we currently have four Springboks uh, as old boys. Um, we waited over 100 years for our first Springbok, who is uh, Pat Saliers, who's uh, currently placed in, um, in at London Irish. Uh, Pat Lambie, uh, Springbok fly half, is now at Racing Metro. And our last two Springboks are Ross Cronier and Ron Kombrunk, who are both based at the Lions up in Johannesburg. I'll tell you, the week leading up to the Hilton Mike Laos, is like no other week at my class. You'll see the vibe is different. The, you can almost feel it in the air. There's something big is coming. Pretty much the whole week, we'll practice a spell that we'll do on the Saturday. Friday night, we'll sing in the dining hall just after supper. Um, and then we'll meet on the main rugby field um, just at, at around 8-ish at night, sing some songs, get a speech from the first team, maybe captain the head boy. Spell means if you're looking at the crowd from the other side, they will spell out words like Hilton and Michaelos, etc. Um, I've been at Michaelos for five years, and I decided that I wanted to be the spirit leader around about last year. For myself, I think, uh, I'm not really a person who is willing to stand in front of so many people, but I thought to myself, to make myself a better person, I can go and take that challenge. In, in the, the scheme of uh, the history of the event, the war cries are a fairly new addition to uh, the excitement around the, mat the matches themselves. Um, I think uh, many people attribute the, this level of war cry with the, the sort of the, the flashing of blazes and different colours, uh, very choreographed, uh, to the days of Bobby Skinstad's involvement at, at Hilton College in the early 90s. In fact, there's as much competition for that, I would argue, that's what actually happening on the pitch. Because you, you can't lose that fixture, you've got to win that one. It's still such a surreal experience because while warming up, you can still hear the crowds from the field and you can hear the second team match in progress and the cheers of the crowd. And then when you're walking up to the tunnel to run onto the field, you can hear the spell and the war cries. It's, it was one of the most, it's the highlight of my high school career and it's definitely, you know, experience that I'm going to cherish forever. When I jog out into the field, like I get goosebumps from, from Hilton boys singing out the Yeltsin war cries and the crowd going very being loud. So I think I'm very proud to represent Yeltsin in playing first team. We played 200 games and we're on 99 wins and Hilton I think just crept up to 91. It's something that, that, that the old boys talk about pretty much for the rest of their lives. Everyone who wants to know what the Hilton Mark last score was in your year. Um, so it's pretty much something that lives with you for a long time. So there's uh, certainly a lot of incentive to get the right result. 
Being captain for my class first team was a huge honor and privilege. I learned so much about my other players because you, you have to learn you know, what works for the team and what doesn't. And I also learned a lot about myself, about my leadership styles and, and how even when you know, the tides are against you, how to keep going and keep moving forward.